Hello everyone, I'm back with another edition of uh, the game of the week and as it happened last week I only played on uh, title Tuesday on chess.com so I picked uh, one of the games uh, from this tournament uh, and let's uh, have a look what happened in this game before I proceed I remind you to press like to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so uh, yet and uh, let's let's go so title Tuesday or rather I should say two title Tuesdays that are played on chess.com every Tuesday are the biggest uh, online tournaments um, on mm, online I mean on chess.com uh, there used to be just one title Tuesday uh, from February 2022 uh, chess.com decided to bring uh, twice uh, as more games, prizes and joy to all the participants and spectators. So uh, we meet uh, twice on Tuesdays. I mm, do play usually in the first edition, in the second one. It depends on some factors because it's quite late. But of course, I'm a big fan of this event. And uh, last week uh, I didn't have a chance to play another um, great event that I enjoy so much, Rapid uh, Chess.com Championship. Uh, so mm, the game of the week uh, this week is from uh, Title Tuesday. 11 games that I played. Uh, I scored 7 out of 11. And uh, this one, this game that I want to talk about, uh, I was playing Black against um, Attack to mate you, uh, Grandmaster from Canada, according to his nickname, Razvan Preto. And uh, we played Gioco Piano. The opening that <laughs> it seems that I've been talking for a while uh, about uh, since um, in the last months I was uh, preparing a lot and actually just finished recording last week a special video course, my first ever, I think, uh, video course on an opening uh, for chess.com about the 6d4. I'm very excited about this video course. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you as soon as it's uh, out and released. I will let you know. But in this game, my opponent opted for uh, another move, another setup, which is uh, quite popular. Nowadays, d3, castle, castle, and here, uh, black and white actually uh, have a lot of uh, different uh, move orders, setups, ideas. Uh, in this particular game, I decided to play like the sharpest way possible. I opted for the 6d5, so I don't play d6 sometimes. Uh, uh, black plays d6, um, but d5, of course, if it's possible, why not, right? We always say that the center is important, it's, uh, one has to fight for the center, so actually d5 or d4 in, um, in open games are the key ideas for each side. So why not? Okay, that's, that's why. Uh, the pawn on e5 is not so easy to protect, and uh, white does get some pressure on this pawn, for example, after rook e1, we see that white uh, pieces are ready to capture on e5, and black needs to decide how to protect the pawn. Of course, one doesn't want to play f6, uh, having this bishop on c4 and such an unpleasant pin. Uh, white can play d4 after that, opening the e file, then play queen b3, and we see that it's not possible anymore to protect the knight on d5 since this rook is uh, is controlling the e file for example after knight c to e7 rook takes e7 can happen or you can take uh, on d4 first and then rook takes e7 then bishop takes d5 and white gets quite a serious advantage if black plays rook e8 it would be good right to protect this pawn with the rook but unfortunately the knight on d5 is hanging and and we see that the queen from d8 protects two pieces at the same time and d4 d4 um, can be quite unpleasant because e takes d4 loses the piece and that's why that's why d5 uh, 
I mean, is a good idea, but whether it works or not, uh, to make it work, you really need to work hard and to prepare some theoretical lines to analyze this continuation at home. Okay, let's see how this pawn can be protected. Bishop g4 is a nice trick. Black's idea is to pin this knight, and if white wants to win this pawn on e5, nevertheless, they would need to play g4, but that weakens the king side. And after bishop g6 take take take, uh, bishop takes f2. Unfortunately, is not um, I mean is not very strong here. Sometimes such ideas exist because uh, uh, there is a nice uh, double attack. But here after queen f3, then queen takes d5. Despite the fact that all those pieces are not developed yet, uh, white has. Um, a good position. So instead, black has to play c6. And let me see. Let me show you some example variation. If white plays uh, d4, what might happen? Bishop d6, rook e1, queen h4. And now those pieces, uh, queen f3 needs to be. Um, this pawn needs to be protected. But then rook a2, e8, and um, a white's position is just too bad. It's impossible to protect the first rank and this square, and uh, uh, white is gonna collapse. So, of course, g4 is not played here. There are different possibilities for white, knight b to d2 being one of them. And um, now, I mean, g4, knight takes e5 is always in the air. Knight b6 it looks uh, that's a nice move, right? We uh, attack the bishop and we open up the queen to look at the d3 pawn. Bishop to b3 is one of the main theoretical lines and one of the tabia of this variation. And uh, of course, it's very tempting to take on d3. Queen takes d3 is indeed uh, one of the main uh, continuation for black here. And the line goes as this knight takes e5. Uh, this exchange is in white's favor. It's been proven already. Uh, queen f5 thus is being played usually. Knight e to f3. And here there have been many, 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 many interesting and exciting games on a very top level. And of course, uh, one of the games that uh, immediately uh, should come to our mind is the uh, um, victory by Anish Giri in... Um, Vikanze 2022 against uh, Andrei Yesipenko. Rook f2 e8 is not the only move, but uh, I want to show you that this kind of positions all, all, often happen in this line where black sacrifices a piece for three pawns and uh, thus they try to prove that pawns are more important than a piece. But again, I'm not a very big fan of long theoretical lines in uh, blitz games and of course i want to play something i, I try to get out of uh, such lines as soon as i can king h8 is an interesting move i prepare f6 i get out of the spin and this move i already played um, in the world cup uh, against uh, Maria Muzuchuk in a very, very interesting and strong game uh, that I won with black. So I have good memories about this move. Knight to e4 and in the game against uh, Maria I played uh, bishop to d6. Here um, it's another very interesting crossroad. Uh, there are three moves, three main moves for black to consider. Bishop d6, bishop e7 or knight d7. There were several games with this line uh, just recently for example in Bucharest um, just uh, 10 days ago Jan Nipomnishi against Shahriyar Mamidyarov there was a game that Shahriyar opted for knight to d7 as I said bishop to d6 I played against Maria and in this game I decided to play bishop to e7 Quite a possibility, white's idea is to play knight to g3 to attack the bishop. If I retreat the bishop, then this pawn can be taken. That's why my next move is kind of forced. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, f5. Okay, white got a pair of uh, two strong bishops. I have quite a strong center. This pawn is quite weak, so I do have some counterplay. Uh, the main theoretical line um, is... Um, um, 
connected with uh, the breakthrough d4. So sometimes white plays a4, then d4, but my opponent played bishop to d2. I don't think it's a good move because the bishop is uh, put on uh, an unprotected square. Thus, all the ideas with e4 uh, should, I mean, white should be ready. And actually, after bishop d2, e4 uh, was quite an interesting move. I think I. Um, it was worse considering and playing, but for some reason, I during this blitz game, I was not really thinking a lot about e4, and that was my mistake, because as we will see, e4 is a key idea of uh, this position for black to break through. I played bishop g5, this move is okay, okay, I exchanged this bishop, so no more a pair of bishop uh, for a white. Uh, queen to g5 attacking the rook knight d to e2 uh, is a mistake actually knight f1 was a little bit better why because after a knight, a rook d to e2 i have a very interesting and strong idea and i hope you guessed it right of e4 uh, a very strong move here why i sacrifice the pawn with the idea to free up the square for my knight, the e5 square, and after knight e5, it turns out that if black, if white plays queen e3 and f4 with a fork, gonna follow, and if white plays uh, queen to h5, I can take, take, and play f4, very cute move, cutting off this knight from the g3 square and preparing to win this knight by playing g6, and if white tries to uh, make this knight leave the sideline, then this square is weakened and another fork is coming up. So it would be, it would have been quite unpleasant for white if I would play e4, but unfortunately in a blitz game sometimes you uh, miss such a nice tactical opportunities. I played rook a to d8, quite a reasonable move. Uh, bringing my rook to the plate and putting some pressure on the d3 square. Um, this move is okay, um, but okay, white well, needed to play knight f1 back back from this uh, um, dangerous spot, uh, but white made a mistake again, bishop c2, and here once, once again e4 was the strongest continuation with the idea to play knight e5 and to trap the knight on the uh, side of the board but okay i felt that there are some ideas but i just uh, wasn't able <laughs> to to see uh, which move I, I don't know as i already mentioned for some reason this idea just slipped away from my attention although you should always look at the center you should always try to find those um, tactical ideas especially in open games looking at the center uh, but I looked at the side and I played h5. <laughs> okay, well, similar idea, similar idea, but uh, okay. I didn't, uh, when I played h5, that was a blunder because I didn't realize that my pawn can be taken. Okay, well, there are some um, lines to calculate. A4 is the idea again uh, with uh, this... Uh, move coming up but unfortunately it's y2 move the bishop is already on c2 and d4 almost wins the game well maybe not wins but white uh, uh, does get a, a quite a big advantage instead my opponent was so scared by this unexpected move that he didn't dare to take on h5 he should have taken with the queen because after knight uh, takes h5, well, I do have this e4, g6 ideas in there. Uh, but instead, he decided to ignore uh, this move and play it before. Well, the move in the wrong uh, direction uh, and at the wrong side. Because here, finally, I realized that there is something in the center going on. I played h4, I pushed this knight to f1, and... Finally, hooray, hooray, I managed to play e4, and that's the key move that's been asking to be played for so many moves already. Finally, finally, I realized the power of this idea, knight e5, queen e3, f4, and when you uh, find the right plan, the right consequences of the moves, it's 
the rest is easy. Knight f3, a very nice pin and a fork. Uh, and I won an exchange and the position, of course, is simply uh, completely winning. But as we know, the most difficult part uh, is to win uh, a winning position. But here I think I managed to do it uh, quite nicely. First of all, I improved the position of my knight. I transfer it to e5 via c4. I played knight c4, a knight h2, knight e5. We know that the knight in the center is like it's the best place for a knight. Eight squares it can go to the maximum and it takes uh, under control those uh, uh, this uh, two important squares f3 and g4 thus this knight cannot go to f3 nor g4 rook g1 queen h5 maybe not the most precise move but okay uh, bishop d1 knight d3 queen c2 queen e5 and here unfortunately i missed a small and nice tactic you should always keep an eye on the king and yes this queen is protecting this square but what about this sacrifice what about trying to deflect this um, queen and give a very cute smothered mate well i missed this uh, possibility i played c5 and there were some um, moves played but at the end at the end i managed to give a checkmate another checkmate Rook takes h3, g takes h3, queen takes h3, and let's have a look at my reaction. Um, let's have a look at, at the few last seconds of the game. Okay, here we go. Checkmate is coming. Whew. <laughs> Despite this terrible blunder, h5, it was not calculated and expected of course ah that looked okay well you've heard it all uh that was a nice game nevertheless uh, quite uh, an important theoretically and um, after analyzing it after looking at it we know how important the center is and um, i hope that you learned this e4 idea uh, the idea of uh, sacrificing the center pawn in order to let the knight from c6 go to e5 and get closer to the king side i hope that you enjoyed this game as i mentioned i'm going to play again tonight at 5 pm central european time on chess.com and i'm streaming when I'm playing on Twitch, twitch.tv dash chess queen. So I hope to see you all there. And if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to this channel and do subscribe to twitch.tv dash chess queen. All the best and see you real soon.